All right. So question number two, we have a steady flow adiabatic turbine. The steam entering at 500 C in four megapascals with a velocity of 70 meters per second and leaving at 30 kilopascals in 92% quality in 40 meters per second. The mass flow rate of steam is eight kilograms per second. Determine the change in kinetic energy and the power output. Okay, so this is an easy question, in my opinion. I think this is a, an, an easy four you can get out of this one here. And then this one, I don't find this one hard either, but let's see what you guys think. What we have here is a state, we have steam, let's do this, have steam and it's coming in hot. It's coming in at a high state of energy. So this is our first state. And then we're ending at a lower state of energy with 30 kilopascals and 92% quality. So we like this. We know this cannot happen without energy leaving our system. So there's some energy leaving here and we know this energy is going to the turbine. Mm, now, the idea is we need to find kinetic energy, I'll make sure not highly kinetic, but energy, right? And power. So we would expect this guy to be given in certain sort of kilojoules unit, and this guy to be given in some sort of kilowatts unit, okay? Uh, so let's do that. I don't think, I don't find this one, I don't think this one has any curveballs. Let's do, what is the change in kinetic energy? That's gonna be the kinetic energy on state two minus the kinetic energy on state one. That is mass, velocity two squared, divided by two minus mass, velocity one squared, divided by two. There's no change in mass. We have a turbine, simple turbine. So what's happening here is we're going from, let's draw a little turbine here. Boom, 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 boom. So this is our state one, this is our state two. We're going from here to here. Mass conservation principle dictates that the mass flow rate that enter has to leave. There's no other way for mass to go. So what's happening in this system is that, and we also have the release of energy over here for the turbine. All right, so we're going from a higher state of energy to a lower state of energy. We have kinetic energy involved as well. Now, we don't have mass per se, right? We have mass flow rate. And if we were to put mass flow rate here, and get this as a flow, that will be power, which would be, not energy anymore per se, or be energy rate. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is our old trick of send this guy dividing. So my delta kinetic energy divided by mass, which is gonna give me kilojoules per kilogram, will be V2 squared minus V1 squared divided by two, in which case that is uh, 40, that's my V2, 40 squared minus 70 squared, divided by two. And I'm doing this live, so back me up here, please. 40 squared minus 70 squared, divided by two, 1,650. Uh, so that's negative, 1,650. And that is uh, joules per kilogram. So this is the same thing as minus 0.65 kilojoules per kilograms. It's especially useful to do this at this point in time because then I can use this kinetic energy already in kilojoules. I'll have to worry about converting it later on. I'm gonna try to account for the kinetic energy, the contribution that it has to the energy that's being given to the turbine. All right, so this is answer for A. Let's do put A over here, A, answer. And no curves ball there. I think it's a straightforward question. Um, Pablo, if I were to multiply by the mass flow rate and get it in power, would that be incorrect? Don't know, unsure. If I'm marking it, I'll probably give you guys three out of four or maybe two out of four, I'm not sure. But now as we're marking it, I would say just play safe and just give it an energy as you would always encounter change of kinetic energy to be. Um, now, second one, power output. That's something we did a lot, right? That's conservation of energy. So B, uh, we know the sum of, not the variation of energy, the sum of all the energy has to be the same. So therefore, all the energy that we have on state one has to be equal to the energy on state two plus the energy released by that turbine there. 
right? So it's just literally just looking at this kind of diagram and seeing that, okay, both these guys here are coming from this guy here. That's pretty much it. All right, so what is the energy that we have on the first term, right? Sorry, the first state. So we have, um, we can do the whole thing if you want to. So we can do P V or one plus U of one plus G Z of one plus kinetic energy one has to be equal to P two V two U two G Z two um, kinetic energy two plus of the turbine. And then we can do Z1, Z2, and H equals U plus PV. So we can transform this guy into H1 plus kinetic energy one equals H2 plus kinetic energy two plus of the turbine. Oops, no, this energy of the turbine. Yeah, if that's the case, that means that my change in entropy from one to two plus my change in kinetic energy, that's just one minus Q two, is equal to the turbine output, which is what we're looking for. All right, so that means that we can solve this guy by finding what is the enthalpy on both sides. And we can do that, um, and we can sum up the difference in, in kinetic energy that we already calculated, right? So what is H1 and H2? That's something that we have been doing for quite a while. It's not something that we're stressing over, right? So state one, has 500 mega, no, sorry, 500 Celsius. And what is the pressure? Four megapascal. So let's do that one more time together, like a happy family that we are. Shared property tables. Where's my property tables? Over here, shared property tables. Cool. So I'm looking at um, steam, this is steam, and it's at 500, 500 uh, Celsius and four megapascals. So four megapascals is 4,000 kilopascals, and the saturation temperature is 250 Celsius. If I am at 500, this guy is superheated, right? So I'm gonna be looking at superheated tables, table A6, and I'll be looking at four megapascals. So I'm looking down all the way on page 910 and 500. So my enthalpy is this guy here, 3,446. The other one is, uh, has a quality. So we know by definition that's going to be a mixture. And that's a 30 kilopascal. So I'm going to go to table A6, no, A5, sorry, pressure table, 30 kilopascals. And I'll be looking at the enthalpy being this guy here, right? So it's gonna be 8% of this guy and 92% of this guy, easy peasy. So I can grab those two entropies from the table like we've been doing for a while now. So let's do that. Let's go back to sharing the screen. So let me grab these values here. State one, entropy one equals 34, 46, state two, enthalpy two equals uh, 2437.7. All right, so that means that if I want to find out what is the energy of that guy there. I just need to put down the values that I have. If I want to find the power, what I need to do is multiply that energy for the mass flow rate, right? So I can do that if I don't want to, I want to save myself some time, I can do, okay, so that means that the turbine 
the power that this guy is getting is equal to the mass flow rate times the difference in um, enthalpy plus the difference in, let me just make sure this mass flow rate is multiplying everything, plus the difference in kinetic energy plus kinetic energy one minus kinetic energy two. Okay, so let's plug these values in and you guys back me up on the uh, calculation, please. Okay, so we're multiplying this, all this for, it's eight, is it eight? Eight kilograms per second. So we're multiplying, it's gonna be three, four, four, six, minus three, oops, two, oh wait, two, four, three, seven point seven. Plus um, kinetic energy is going to be negative whatever we found before. So it's going to be negative the 165, right? So it's going to be positive 1.65. So that'll be a positive 1.65 there. And this guy is kilograms per second multiplied by kilojoules per kilograms, which is going to give us kilowatts. All right, so I'm typing it. I'm going to type it in. Please just type it in too so that there's no silly mistakes on our part for this calculation. Can make this divide by a thousand zero point zero point eight oh eight kilowatts. Can somebody please back me up on this? See if you get the same result. Yeah, but the same result. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is the power that is outputted by this turbine. Yeah, you could have done this in another step if you wanted to. So you could have calculated this as um, this one first, right? If you wanted to. So it'll just be that literally just the 1079.6 divided by eight. It's gonna be a thousand something. It's gonna be thousand, oops, thousand nine point ninety five kilojoules per kilogram. So that's the amount of energy per kilogram that the turbine is releasing or making a useful energy and then we'll multiply that by the mass flow rate to get the power. Right, so oops. So that one's pretty much it for this question, A and B. Uh Opa, just one thing here. Watch out. I've meant to make this megawatts and it just left a kilo there. Watch out. All right, so that's pretty much question two. Any questions that you have?